Jessa Seewald, most publicly recognizable by her maiden name of Duggar, went public recently about a pregnancy loss which she experienced over the holidays this past year. Twitter collectively lost its mind. Let's talk about it. Jessa Seewald is of Duggar 19 Kids and Counting fame. Most of us know who they are from their TLC show and are at least somewhat aware of their extreme conservative views in both their personal lives, but also in political activism. Jessa went public talking about a miscarriage on her YouTube channel. Yesterday, I did have some spotting. I haven't really had that much in any of my other pregnancies. I'm at the end of my first trimester. It does seem a bit concerning. As soon as she started taking a look at the baby, I could tell there was some concern in her voice. I feel like in some ways, missed miscarriages can be so much more jarring. In that video, she goes on to explain some of her feelings. It's hard having this hollow feeling inside because you know that you know the life that was in you is no longer there. You never did get to see your baby or say those goodbyes. The hardest of my life, just laying there feeling so Alone. Honestly, very vulnerable about her experience of pregnancy loss, something that is quite common and that I feel strongly should be met with empathy. Of course, there's always the questions that go through your mind, like just all these different thoughts of, was it something on my part that I did or did not do right? You know, I've talked a little bit about pregnancy loss in the past, and I actually did a video on miscarriage with Sierra Schultze, and I just want to throw in a clip of something that I said in that video. You didn't cause your miscarriage, and it's not something you need to work on. This world is full of terrible, unlucky things, and unfortunately, miscarriage can be one of those. You didn't lift something too heavy or bend the wrong way or let your toddler roll on top of you. Those things did not make this happen. Following the publication of that video, People Magazine took kind of snippets of that video to make an article which they titled, Jessa Duggar reveals she had a miscarriage. I just immediately started crying. In this article, they detail her YouTube story that she told. However, they make it what I believe is intentionally vague regarding the actual diagnosis. They specifically detail that she went to an ultrasound and the doctor broke the terrible news that the baby, quote, did not look good. And Jessa does say that in her video. The sack looks good, the baby does not. I think they intentionally leave out the rest of the statement which immediately followed in her original video, seemingly directly quoting her from the YouTube video and leaving out the missed part of missed miscarriage. I feel like in some ways, missed miscarriages can be so much more jarring. You don't accidentally leave out just the missed part. It's a direct quote. There was no fetal heartbeat at the time that she went to this appointment. People Magazine intentionally kept that vague because they knew it would farm outrage on Twitter and garner clicks. There is absolutely no reason that it would be so vague in my opinion, otherwise. They go on to detail that she ended up having a DNC because she didn't feel it was safe to have medication at home. There are so many reasons that people would choose a DNC over medication at home. And honestly, it's irrelevant to the discussion that we're having. What unfolded after that was a series of viral tweets, which again, I think People Magazine predicted would happen. People just collectively using that as their fuel to say why she must call it an abortion because she's advocated against abortion in the past and now she's had one. That was the general point of of all of these tweets. Going as far in some tweets to say she had an illegal abortion, which is just, it's not true. Like I understand the overlap and we're gonna talk about this. It's not illegal in any state, not even Arkansas where the laws are really strict to have a DNC for a missed miscarriage where the fetus has no heartbeat. This isn't illegal anywhere. I will address what some of you have in your head right now. So don't don't comment yet. I'm going to address that, but it's not it's not technically illegal. Now, I want to clearly state Jessa is a public figure and she chose to share this story publicly. She is vocally anti-choice and she has made no secret of that, as well as the fact that she has a very politically aligned and plugged in family. I am not making the argument in this video that it's off limits to use her story to discuss this in a productive manner. I do take issue with the manner in which it was done, 
for some reasons that I will talk about in a moment. One of the tweets that I interacted with was this one, and it says, to be clear, this is a member of one of the most famous vocally anti-abortion families admitting she got an abortion. I have no problem with this tweet author. In fact, I think she is a wonderful person who does incredible activism in the prison reform sector. The way that the tweet is worded is misleading, and I don't think that this person intended for this to happen, but led to a barrage of people just basically screaming, you had an abortion, not a miscarriage. From an advocacy standpoint, I just simply do not think that tens of thousands of tweets yelling at someone who is sharing their grief is productive for getting to the goal. And I think it holds a lot of potential for both individual harm to Jessa, which I know a lot of you are willing to disregard, and, and I understand that point as well, but also to other people who are not her, but are just watching the conversation unfold. While I understand the point of the tweet, I don't think it's totally accurate, and it makes some semantic points that I think I think we should talk about. I think the easiest way to start this is to ask you to honestly, in your mind, if somebody is just in conversation saying, I had an abortion, what does that make you think? We know the social definitions, right? Socially, if you say, I had an abortion, you mean you intentionally ended a pregnancy that you didn't want. If you say, I had a miscarriage, it means you had a desired pregnancy that ended against your wishes. Now, is there some overlap, particularly when you get into lethal anomalies and things like that? Yes, but if we're just going to take this at a basic level, that is the social use of this language. And while I agree politicization of the word abortion has led to this, it is the existing social language that we have, okay? So when we discuss things socially, we do have to acknowledge that. In this tweet, they mix the social use of the word abortion anti-abortion in the sense that they have put it here is against induced abortion with abortion that is meant medically. Abortion in the second place that it is used is the medical definition. Medically, abortion is clinically usually used as pregnancy loss under 20 weeks for any reason. You can have spontaneous abortion, meaning you just had a miscarriage, and then you can have induced abortion. Induced abortion is the medical or clinical definition word that we use usually for what socially you would call abortion, okay? That means that miscarriage does, yes, technically fall under the clinical definition of abortion. What seems to be happening in a lot of these discussions is that DNC or dilation and curatage is being conflated as DNC equals abortion. That's not accurate either. DNC is a procedure and sometimes the indication for the procedure is the social word miscarriage and sometimes it is the social word abortion and sometimes it is completely unrelated to pregnancy at all, okay? Uterine cancer or abnormal uterine bleeding or heavy periods, and we can talk about it in medical terms and use the medical language surrounding it, including the medical definition of miscarriage, which is also abortion, okay? I understand that point, uh, but DNC does not equal abortion, and that's how it's used largely in a lot of these conversations, and, and that's just not accurate. Like, you can't get mad at somebody for calling their pregnancy loss and miscarriage, it doesn't just stop being a miscarriage because you required a DNC. That's just not how it works. It would be akin to saying you had somebody cut into your uterus, you had a C-section. Like, that's not necessarily true. There are many reasons that we have to do surgery on a uterus. It's a procedure and the indication for the procedure is what defines what you're trying to talk about here. So when I say that they've mixed the social and medical language in this tweet, which makes it difficult to interpret for the average person who maybe didn't read the story and watch the video, that's what I mean. Because the first line is the social use, anti-abortion family. They're against induced abortion, right? Second line is the medical use, saying she had an abortion is only accurate if you're using it in a medical sense, right? Okay, so now we've we've lined out that the semantics have been overlapped in this tweet. I think that that is why it led to this barrage of anger with people thinking that what she had was an induced abortion, which they vehemently fight against people having access to, and then taking that to use as a pillar of a reason to make a 
scapegoat of her, essentially. When you start doing this like semantics game and mixing everything up with, you know, some social language and some medical language and some political language, and it just gets confusing. So I do happen to think that uh, a single tweet or even a barrage of tweets is probably not the best way to address these topics. And I understand that for some people that's, that's the only way that they can because they don't have a place you know, like I do to talk about it in more detail, but I think these topics deserve a lot of nuance. I have a passion for taking care of the lost community, okay? And I will never be okay with rationing my compassionate care or my compassion towards individuals sharing their story of loss based on a character judgment. A lot of people are standing on a foundation of this being acceptable discourse and manner of discourse more. I think the discourse itself is probably acceptable, but anyway, the manner being acceptable because hypocrisy deserves to be called out. And I would venture to say that because nobody in this circle thinks that they are advocating for DNC for missed miscarriage to not be available, they're not going to see that and have some epiphany that they were wrong and now they should support choice, right? This is not, that's not an effective strategy because that's not how they see this. Wait, 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 before you go crazy, I am painfully aware that the laws they advocate for often do interfere with people's ability to get care in the process of a spontaneous and induced or elective termination. That fact that is very real reality to me as someone who has worked in Texas for the majority of my career is not going to be made as an epiphany to them with this manner of discussion. It's a technique that is phrased for maximum Twitter engagement because what gets engagement on Twitter? Things that make people polarized and angry. I get it. I tweet too. And I am definitely not innocent of using my anger to probably make points that were unhelpful or even counterproductive, but I do think this is counterproductive. I made a few points on Twitter saying this semantics game is silly and I stand by that. And some people pointed out that I've made content in the past where I called treatment of ectopic pregnancy and things like this a abortion. And it, it is technically by the medical definition that I gave you earlier. The reason I think this is a different situation is because we in those videos, I'm addressing things in a medical context. And in this situation, we have a single individual who in a social context shared some experience they've been to through. And then we have thousands of people demanding that she change her social use of the word miscarriage to abortion, which is just not something we do. Nobody does that in day-to-day -day life. Anyway, I'm being too wordy here. I, I just, I have so many feelings and thoughts. I can't even get them out into a straight narrative. But basically the politicization of the word abortion is what causes all of these breakdowns in communication and failure to actually have effective discourse. I'm not blaming any individuals who were involved in this discussion because I have contributed to this more times than I can count and I uh, don't fault them. Miscarriage is still a really taboo topic to talk about. The spectrum of how pregnancy affects people emotionally, physically and socially is expansive and critically important to this discussion. On one side of that spectrum, you have a desired pregnancy that has been lost. On the other side of that spectrum, you have an undesired pregnancy that you don't have ability to take care of. And there is a link between these two spectrum ends, right? If you walk through my office door or you tell me your story of loss on the internet, I will be compassionate about something that you went through that is a very common experience in women and AFAB people because I think that that is a pillar of making sure that these are respected things that happen and affect people both desired pregnancy that is lost and undesired pregnancy that you are forced to keep. Retaining compassion without rationing based on character judgments for both of those situations and the spectrum in between is the pillar of why I support choice. And I, I will not forego that because I need to make a point that also will not uh, advance 
getting to where we need to be, which is getting our rights back. Does this make sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense. We need our rights back. I get it. I just, I have a real passion for taking care of people who lose desired pregnancies. And I also have a real passion for making sure that everybody has a choice in their bodily autonomy and that all pregnancies and the decisions that surround them stay between a doctor and a patient. They want our position to look unpalatable. It helps their movement if we can be painted into a box of a group of people who don't have any compassion for how important pregnancy is to some people, right? So while we know that's not true and that our foundation is just ensuring that everybody can make choices that are best for them and that medical decisions stay between a patient and a doctor without the interference of the government, and we just want everybody to have access to the exact same procedure that Jessa had, regardless of the indication, when we take an individual's raw and heartbreaking story and we use it without nuance to push a point that they don't think they're arguing against, it falls flat. And it only has a potential to be counterproductive to the actual goal. I don't know if I'm making sense. I just needed to talk about this and I've been spending too much time tweeting about it and it, I, I, a lot of people agree with me uh, and a lot of people disagree with me and that's okay. I think that it's really important to have that discourse. If you're here because you are anti-choice and you think that anything I said in this video supports your position, you are wrong. Compassion for people losing a desired pregnancy is not something you have a monopoly on. There's a lot of anger from people who have had their rights stripped and they spoke based on that, rightfully so. They are not the problem. Your legislation is the problem. The way this unfolded on Twitter is a symptom of the problem.